Before we run a demo, we should have a setup about all the background of the demo story. So now it's story time. The demo is a story about decentralized trusted computing between Alice, Bob, Charlie, and Dave. Alice is a wildlife photographer. She has recently captured some magnificent image of a lion, hoping to earn a couple of bucks. She makes this image available for use on research platform while maintaining ownership of actual pages. Bob is a hardcore developer that works on image recognition models. His most recent application is a TensorFlow image recognition model compiled to WebAssembly. He could like to open up his application for use without creating the opportunity for others to copy his code. Charlie is an IPFS miner. He's recently added a T-module to his device, allowing him to mine both Falcon and the T-token with the same mining machine. He wonders how the T-module is able to receive sensitive information from clients and run computations securely and privately. Dave is a seasoned scientist. He's currently researching wild animal behavior by analyzing images. While he cannot analyze every picture manually, he can run an AI algorithm on wildlife pictures he's collected from photographers. The four characters each play a different role in the story. One common thread is that to do business with each other, they require a level of trust that is currently not available. This is where T comes in, a decentralized trusted computing platform. Alice simply uploads her picture to the T platform which return deployment ID for it. Bob does the same with his code. Charlie is one of many IPFS plus TEA miners in the T-network, running trusted computation service to rest of the gun. Dave has been running Bob's application for a while and needs some new material to scan. He soon finds Alice's images and purchases some for analysis. For Dave, the experience is as simple as paying for the task and receiving the result along with a series of proof of trust verifications. And Alice, Bob, and Charlie receive their payment. The execution of Dave's task only takes place inside or between T nodes. A T node is HSM, which means hardware secure module, that is protected by both hardware and consensus. No one, including Charlie, a miner and a T node owner, can access the information inside the module, let alone a hacker. Alice gets paid for her picture without giving away any files. Bob, Charlie, and even Dave do not own a copy of the picture. Bob gets paid for his TensorFlow algorithm without giving Alice, Charlie, or Dave a single line of code. Charlie is clueless about any of these activities and simply gets paid for the services. He has zero knowledge about the tasks and the data. Dave gets the output he requested and can verify through the proof of trust. That the result is based on the correct code and algorithm and the data input. This is one of many examples of how decentralized trusted computing with a cup of tea works. So now let's start the demo. To launch a demo, you need to go to the entry point from our website. Click the demo button or from the menu. They are going to the same location. This is the try the demo documents. So first you can read the story, a setup of the whole demo. We also have another video talking about this. There are a few prerequisites before starting the demo. Uh, we need an extension, a Polkadot extension. If you haven't installed this extension, now it's time to do that. You click the button and you can select what browser you are using, either Chrome or Firefox, because I have installed the extension, so I don't want to repeat. After you install the extension, you can create a new account. You don't have to write down the seed because all the money is fake money. But the account ID, you may need it, so you can copy the account ID. Here you can write down 
the name of the account. For me, I just use Kevin at T. This is a password you can access to your account of the extension. Again, because it's fake money, so it doesn't have to be a long password. You cannot remember anyway. Now click to add the account into the extension. Here you can see your account. Now we go to the faucet to get some free token. After reading the instruction, you can paste your account ID here. First, you can check your balance. It's supposed to be zero because this is a new account. Now click the button. Give me 1000 T token for free. After a few seconds, you can see the balance changed to 1000. Now let's go back to the original page and review the checklist. So we have done all of the prerequisites. Now we can start. This is the link to our first demo. After you click the link, your browser will open a new tab. You can see the URL. This is a typical IPFS URL. That means your browser is loading an object from IPFS. This is the CID of the object. Although you can see the server like trust.com 8080, but actually this is just the IPFS port. You don't have to have a server running. You can have any IPFS server running or your local IPFS server. You actually can get the code from any IPFS server. So in this case, we don't need to run a server. IPFS stores all the code. And the code is running in your browser without any interaction with servers. Even if the trust.com dead at this moment, doesn't, doesn't matter because your application is running in browser. You can see the list of the nodes. The first four nodes is our, we call bootstrap nodes. They have the public IP address. If you own some T nodes yourself, they probably be listed here as well under those four bootstrap nodes. You can also see the status, they are all active right now. By the way, you can see the node secure in the URL. That means we didn't launch the HTTPS. We just use a typical HTTP. Um, the reason actually we explain in the our FAQ section of our document, and uh, you can read it. Uh, in one word, we don't really need HTTPS because we are secure enough, and uh, all the information transfer between your browser and the uh, nodes has been encrypted already. So it's no reason to use HTTPS. Let's continue our demo. You are Dave right now, uh, the scientist. First, you're gonna select your account because I'm using my extension, so that's called Kevin and T. But uh, in real demo, probably it's your name. Here, you select the delegator. If you have your own T node, you can select yours. If you don't, you can select any of them because they are delegator. They are not executor. All delegator does is just organize your task and assign a executor to run your task. For example, we randomly selected Bob. This Bob probably not the Bob we mentioned in our story, uh, the developer. We happen to use Bob as the name of the node, so don't get confused. Now we click next step. At this moment, your browser is asking Bob, the delegator, would you like to be my delegator? Bob did some basic check and make sure he is available, so he replied to your browser. Yes, why not? I'm not busy right now. What can I do for you? Then you can see this page. From here, you can see three numbers. The last one is a layer one account. That means how many money do you have in your account in the blockchain. Zero in the middle is called a balance. Actually, it is deposit. That means how much money you pay the delegator as deposit or escrow. The reason we need the escrow is because uh, the Bob cannot trust you since you don't have a, any a credit since you're a client. You're not a T node. So in case that you, you didn't pay the money after your task is completed, Bob has no way to get you pay the money. So you have to pay up front. The first one is locked. That means once the task started, your deposit is locked. You cannot take the money out until this task is completed or rejected. If the task is rejected, your money will be back to the balance or deposit. After that, you can take the money out of deposit back to your layer one account. The reason we have a locked account is Bob, the delegator, has to make sure this money will be payable to the executor and other involved nodes. 
you can see we have zero balance as locked or deposit to Bob. So we probably have to pay the deposit. Otherwise, Bob cannot continue to work for us. We click the deposit. Input the number. We can just pay 100. It's enough. Every time you pay any fund from your account, you have to type in the password because it's your money, even it's fixed money. Now you can see success. And after a few seconds, you can save 100 in the deposit account. And your total balance is dropped. There is a small chart for transactions, so that's why you can see 99.99 here. That is typically called a gas fee. If you want to check the transaction ID, you can go to the layer 1 to check. There was 100 transaction from your account to Bob's account. Let's continue to the task brief. You can see the description of the task. This is the CID of the code. The developer deployed it before. As in previous steps, this is also CID, the IPFS content ID. You can get the deployment from any IPFS server. The deployment actually the object including the code and the description such as who can run the code, the press tag, and the prerequisites to run this code. This is the deployment of the data. In our story, it's Alice image deployment. Similar to the deployment of the code, the deployment of data is an object describing where to find the data, press tag, who can run, and all the metadata. Here you can set how much you are going to pay for use of the code and the data. Of course you can type any number, but if the number doesn't match, probably the market will not make the deal. In this JSON object, you can set up how much you're going to pay in total and how you're going to distribute your payment to the delegator and the executor. Of course you can set any number, but if the price is too low, there would be no delegate or executor would like to execute your task and your task would be in the task pool forever. In this demo, we just don't change anything, just click run the task. Now you ask to pay again the password. Now it's just wait till you can see the result is coming out. At the meantime, the delegator trying to find the executor using the criteria you set in the description. There could be many executors try to complete the task, and the delegator will choose one based on the preset logic. The winner will get the chance to execute the task. The winner executor will show the proof of certificate to the pinner who ping Alice and Bob's code and data. The pinner verify the proof of the certificate. They know this guy, oh, let's see it's Charlie, is the winner. Charlie had the chance to run this task and they can send the key to Charlie. Charlie will use the key to decrypt the code and data inside the hardware secure module and run the code inside as well. After Charlie completed the task, Charlie will send the encrypted result back to Delegator and also a hash of the result into the blockchain. There were many validators is also selected by the delegator. What they do is during the execution, they will do remote test session on Charlie's node to make sure Charlie did everything correctly. After that, Charlie will clean the memory and sign the transaction completed notification. Now the task is completed. You can see the result. See it's a line. 65% likely to be a line. That's how AI work. After that, you can also see a, a detailed list. You will know now who was the delegator, who was the executor, who actually ran your task. Right now, everything is released to public because uh, the executor has already cleaned the memory. Even hacker realized who was uh, the executor, but there's no reason for the hacker to attack right now because the memory has been cleaned already. In the bidding session, you can also see how they distribute the uh, money. Alice got two units, Bob got three. Executor and delegator also share the remaining. They should be validator, but we just uh, skip, we just ignore in our first demo. That's it, all set.
Enjoy.